Hello everyone and welcome to this special episode of our Luminar Neo Academy, the show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. In today's special episode, we're going to be looking at a brand new update for Luminar Neo with the number 1.0.6. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm your Luminar Guide and I'm also the creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, in today's episode, in the first part, I'm going to run through the list of all the updates coming with the specific update. In the second part, I'm going to show you how to install this update. And in the final part, we're going to go into our studio, we're going to jump onto the computer and I will show you how to use all the new features and new tools. So first of all, let's start by going through the list of the updates. If you haven't noticed, the update is heavily focusing on the masking tool in Luminar Neo. So first we get the highly anticipated and very powerful Mask AI tool. Also the interface of the masking tool has changed quite a lot and I'm going to show you how it looks in a moment when we're going to be doing the editing. And finally, we're finally getting some of the favorite tools, including the gradient and radial option to do even further local adjustments using the masking tool. A part of that, we're also getting access to the histogram, which can be now used on Windows and Mac machines, and it can be used on all sorts of pictures. Now this also comes with the clipping mask feature, and finally we are able to see the highlights and shadows directly on the image. To top it off, Skylim also improved and fixed over 10 bugs which were bothering some of the photographers during their photo editing. So the experience should be once again smoother. So that's that and that's what we're going to be looking at right now. But first I want to show you how to install the update on your own machine. But before we're going to do that, I want to talk to you about our brand new Luminar Neo Power Bundle. This bundle includes over 850 elements for your favorite tools in Luminar Neo. You will get professional and high definition skies, overlays, textures, sky objects, LUTs and presets. So if you want to find out more about this popular tool, just jump into the description of the video and find out more about it there. So the next thing we're gonna do is to jump on the computer and show you how you can install the update on your own machine. So as you can see, we are on my computer and this is where I'm going to show you how to install the recent edit into your Luminar Neo. So let's open the application and while it's opening at the moment, you don't get prompt to install the update. Usually after Skylum release the update for Luminar, you get a little message saying that there is an update. However, this didn't happen yet. So for this, you need to go inside of a Luminar Neo up in a toolbar and click on check for updates. Now it takes a moment and then, then it gives you this message window where it says a new version of Luminar Neo is available. Luminar Neo 1.0.6 is now available. You have 1.0.5. Would you like it to download it now? Well, of course we would. That's what we're waiting for. So here what we're going to do is simply to click on install update. And as you can see, it's about 4.45 gigabyte big. So we let it download and then we'll come back to it. After it downloads the installation, it's going to extract it. So now it's extracting the update and preparing it for the installation. Once the extraction is finished, you get this window where it says ready to install. And really all you see here is the install and relaunch button. So you just click on that. So as you've seen on your screen, it did all the updates, all the installation and it reset the application. So now let's go into the Luminar Neo, about Luminar Neo and looking at the version of the software, we are now officially on 1.0.6. So this is how you install the update on your own computer. And now it's time to do some editing and look at some of the new features and tools here in Luminar Neo. So as you can see, we are still here in Luminar Neo and we are still in catalog module. Now there were no updates for catalog module. So let's go into the edit module. For this, we're going to need to select any photo. For this, we're going to use this image right here and we will jump into the edit module. Here in the edit module, as I mentioned earlier, lots of the updates were focusing on the masking tool. However, we also got the access to the histogram. Now, by looking at the application, I can't see it. However, you can access it by right clicking on the image 
and then selecting show histogram. By doing that, you can see that you get the histogram on the top of the toolbar here. If you want to remove it, once again, just right click anywhere on the photo and click on show histogram and it disappears. The next option that came with the histogram is the clipping mask. So when you hit J on your keyboard, you see that you get the highlights and the shadows. So you get the highlights on the red zones and shadows in the blue zones. And this is very helpful for when you're adjusting your image in a tools like a develop tool. To switch it off, once again, you just hit J on your keyboard. And now those were the minor updates and it's time to look at the mask tool. So earlier I mentioned that the masking tool got the whole new interface. So what I mean by that, let's choose the develop tool and inside of the develop tool, you can see now we have the option called masking. So let's open the light and let's add some exposure. By doing that, by making a change to the image, we can see that the toolbar on the top changed. We used to have the before, after, add mask, and then reset of the tool. So that's why the masking is now moved to this tab here. So by clicking on that, you get a multiple options. So that's the new interface. We have the option of brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, AI mask, and then we have a mask actions. Inside of the mask actions, we have a fill, clear, invert, copy, paste, and show. So let's start by looking at the brush. The brush is very much similar to what it used to be. And by applying a certain effect to the image, so let's say that we're going to make it much darker and we go back into the masking and then go back to the brush, we can just paint this effect to the specific areas of the image by doing something like this. So we can just paint the darkness on the clothes or we can erase it from certain parts of the image. So we can just erase the brushes and remove the effect from the actual image. Of course, that we can adjust the size, softness and strength here. However, you've seen all of this before. So let's go back. Now you can also use the linear gradient. So we click on that and we will now just drag and drop it on the actual image. When I drag and drop it, you can see I get the three lines. So following the three lines, the middle line is where the middle of the gradient is. And that's where middle of the effect is. The top line is where there is the 100% of the effect. And anything beyond the bottom line is where there is no effect at all. If you want to see the mask, all you need to do is to go inside of the mask actions and click on show. So you can see the mask created by the linear gradient is up here. The third option inside of the masking is the radial gradient. And this is something that is very popular amongst the photographers. It can be used for multiple different purposes. So let's have a look at it. Now it's very similar to the radial gradient you maybe know from Photoshop or Lightroom. And you can pretty much paint it anywhere on the image. And again, by looking at it, you can see that it has a two different circles. Anything that is beyond the outer circle has the full effect and 100% of the effect. Then between the outer circle and inner circle is that's where the gradient is. And everything that is inside of the circle, that's where there is no effect at all. So when we let go, it just applies to the image. Again, we can jump out of this and we can just jump into show mask or hide mask. And finally, we have the AI mask. So what we're going to do, we're going to clear the whole mask. So let's do that by clearing it and then we're going to fill it back in. So we're going to have the black mask in. And what we want to do now is to close this and click on AI mask. By doing that, it takes a moment, it calculates and it finds all the different objects on the image. So as you can see, it did the calculation and it came out with one, two, three, four, five, six different elements. So let's click on the human. So when we do that, I would expect that the application select the human and it did pretty good job. Now, of course, there would be some fixing around the hair, but I think it's very decent. Of course, we can fix this by using the brush and I will show you in some of the future episodes of how you can do this. Let's have a look on the sky. We click on sky and let's see if it's going to add the sky to the selection. Now, the sky selection isn't really great. However, it is a still starting point and it's something to start with when you applying a new mask. We can also switch it off by just hitting any of the elements. So we do that and then we move to the flora. So the flora option selected some bushes here and also part of the Eiffel Tower. So that wasn't great. Then we have the architecture. Let's see what the architecture is going to do. So the architecture selects some parts of the city and definitely the Eiffel Tower. 
Again, the selection isn't great, but that's also because we have a very soft and blurry background. So we'll try it on another image in a moment. Then we have some water, although there is no water at all. And then we have the man-made ground, which should be all the foreground where the lady is standing. And that is pretty decent. So this is how you select the different elements. So you can, for example, select the path and then the human, and then you can apply it to your effect. So this is about the AI mask. Now, additional option we got is the possibility of copy and pasting the selection. So we have the ground selected and we have the lady selected. And now we can click on copy. And let's say that we want to make this black and white. We want the ground and the lady black and white. So for this, we're going to go inside of a color and we're going to remove the saturation completely. However, we don't want to remove the saturation from everywhere. We just want to remove it from the lady and the path. So for this, we're going to go inside of the masking, click on mask action, and we're going to click on paste. So we copied the mask from our develop tool and we're going to paste it into the color tool. And as you can see, the black and white tool stays on the woman and on the path and everything else disappear as it's not masked for this tool. So I think that's pretty cool. Again, some of the other options, you can clear the mask, you can invert the mask, so you can pretty much switch it around. You can have everything black and white except the lady and the path. You can show the mask to see what is selected and what isn't. And then we have the copy and paste, which I just showed you. So before we're going to go, let's try it on one more image. So we jump back to the catalog and let's say that we're going to use this image with lovely sea, rocks, mountains and houses. From here, we're going to go into edit module. And again, let's say that we're going to use the Enhance AI tool. Let's push the accent to really get some colors back. And maybe also let's push the sky enhancer. And let's say that we only want to apply this tool to the actual mountains and the houses, not to the water and not to the sky. It's just an example. Don't worry too much about it. What we're going to do, we're going to go into the masking and we're going to click on AI mask. Once again, it does its own thing. As you can see, we get this fancy calculation. And once it's going to be ready, we're going to try to use it. After it's finished, we have the sky, flora, architecture, water and mountains. So let's see. So we want this effect to disappear from sky. So we click on that. And then we, we want to remove this effect from the water. So we click on the water. Now that is pretty cool. Now, again, I know it's not perfect, but it's a great starting point. So once we finish with this, we can go back and then we can go into the mass action and we can invert the selection. So by doing that, we're telling to the computer, I want you to take the masks and invert them around. I want you to remove the mask from the sky and water and push it on everything else. So this is, this is why we now ended up having the tool on the mountains and on the houses. Now, what about if I want to maybe add more warmth to the same selection? So again, I'm going to click on copy and then I'm going to go into the landscape tool. And here in landscape tool, I'm going to push the golden hour slider. And as you can see, we're getting everything nice, glow and sunny. And we will click on masking. And in the masking, we're going to use the same mask we created earlier in our enhance tool. And we just click on paste. So this way, this tool will be only applied to the areas of the rocks and and there you have it. So I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.